Yeah. On a day. But first, before I discuss this cool, cool or no cool, uh, cool for Yoruba language. Cut it cool. Cut it cool. Ah, what did she cool? <laughs> Wait till we cool the time for Yoruba language, bro. Ah. Come on, it's a shit cool. <laughs> Only cool. Ah. Before we enter into cool matter, you know. Or no cool matter. You know, I think uh, I first want to discuss now on cool. I know now on cool, we will employ uh, 11,000 Indians. So, you know, they skilled enough. First of all, I feel that that number is supposed to be only for maybe 800 Indians to come train 10,200 Nigerians for that job. I do understand, you know. He will, he said 800 Nigerians go learn. He said 800 Nigerians go learn the job for India. We did grow up with them. We didn't know if he come back. You know, the problem really with the guests, you see, Nobody is really interested in empowering the masses of Nigerian people. Be it by employment, be it by... That's why nothing works. That's why you know, the green make anything function well. Because now from, you know, for our country we they underdeveloped. And then a true investment, in a true uh, development rather. Not employ investment, that's how they talk. Now, true development, now in our people say we develop. You know, now our nation we develop. One of the big things we are alive for the discussion, you know, for me, you say truly people wicked for Nigeria. Where we, you know, really as the news come out, they don't employ their internet thugs. They are internet warriors to go everywhere where they post the same uh, this thing. If it's your personal business, is it not the personal bit? Hmm. See, this kind of industries, uh, they, they call them major industries for society. Normally, the government supports the controller. Any industry we got to do with the natural resources of any nation, we got to do will be the breadwinner of that nation. Now government is supposed to gain control of it. You understand? Now this same rich man from Nigeria during Obasan Jordi Jim and then claim say government will get business in business. May government remove all the half all the all the business. Nigeria get how many textile mills did this country where they give Dangote for 1999 uh, between 1999 and 2003? Where they just sell everything to? What do you do with all the textile mills today? Today, now, small rulers they bring in textile from China. Where will they buy for Nigeria? You know, because textile, that one will be, that one, are, they must run the business, they must do the work. Not be everybody go use textile. In the middle class, they use textile. <laughs> so they don't see they won't erase the middle class completely. You know. But Basson just to sell the finery for them. Thank God for Dangote, uh, uh, Yaragu, or we can collect all the refinery back for all the uh, That's why they do the finery if it works in today. Because if it is not their business, person, if it turns out to personal business, then Nigeria has no disarmament. You know, I want to show that something before I continue.
and I see oh see this thing where I post here. Two Indian brothers wanted at home are living big in Nigeria. They say Nigeria has to chop the business room. You know. Look we must, if we go South Africa, Jacob Zuma, all the corruption cases here, yeah, here yeah, Indian people. That then they chop all South Africa money to Jacob Zuma, the Guptas. See ya. I share those two headlines real quick. You know. I share those two headlines real quick. Look at for stop all this nonsense. When I talk, say Nigerians are corrupt. Nigerians will steal from your company. That has nothing to do with anything here. We have a right to demand that we work in our own nation. Nigeria, the, uh, Nigeria graduates how many thousands of engineers every year? Eh? How many thousands of engineers? We most of the should change ourselves, man. Most of the should change ourselves. And now, before I begin to discuss my real topic today, which is all this cool, I want to discuss the story of Kasavub and Mobutu. When I don't see all these African politicians, and seriously, seriously, you know, make a stand up. Because this is our new president for Nigeria, and I personally have been known personally well. So, the good make, if you know if you listen, make some of his agents help and listen to this story to remind them of how the people were in the follow play this dangerous game, how what they really are. <clears throat> because you know, sometimes if you person don't feel say if you don't too big pass, uh, that's where something they happen to. But many no, many no forget the people where they follow play. And to remember the people that they follow play and the kind of pest people they be. I'll tell them the story of Mobutu and Kasabubu. Mobutu na the military yoga of Congo. In fact, <coughs> Lumumba appointed him as because my Lumumba friend, Lumumba appointed him to the head of the military. Without Lumumba, he had no job. He begged, they followed Lumumba up and down. The other one put out for there as a good friend. Kasavubu was the president of Congo. Lumumba was prime minister. I repeat, Lumumba, prime minister, Kasavubu, president, Mobutu, head of military. Then, as they see, say Lumumba, the, you know, greed do what Europeans want. He want the European country nationalize the resources, bring dignity back to his people through education, good health care, good housing. The system of the bribe and of the... They connive with both Kasavubu and Mobutu. Mobutu and Kasavubu help the CIA and the Belgian government to kill Lumumba. So now, Kasavubu... <laughs> The only reason why Kasavubu joined the whole plan is because in Kasavubu, he was a politician, educated, rich, wealthy, you know, the elite, man. He believes, say, na him, na him the Europe, Americans like, because, but he no understand, say, because he be an educated man, they no even like him. Na the Mugu, Mobutu Gongo, na him they like pass. Because see, not just military, and the job where they want is not. They don't want democracy for for African people. They've never wanted African people to have a choice in anything. They need us to be under the iron grip of their military boys. Although our politicians and their boys, the politicians are some way educated enough to negotiate some things. It not be as easy as military. Now let them and military go talk. Now we we'll just come do as in like. 
which is what they want for Africans, to remove us from any negotiation. The number one duty we any military will do for any African country is to ban all assembly and ban all unions. With the banning of the unions comes the fact that the people, the workers of that country cannot negotiate their, their uh, negotiate or bargain what they will earn in any new business or whatever coming to their land. And I will come to this point where they make later. So Kasavubu now don't help them to kill Lumumba. He's there running as president. I seen they talk to CIA, we say American government, they tell us, don't worry, we are supporting you. Now you see American government, they plan coup with Mobutu, we remove him from power. And when he was removed from power, the people of Congo no rise up. Why would the people of Congo not rise up? Why the people of Congo no fight for their democracy? Because the people of Congo already were like, this is not our, we don't send any of these people back. They are all the same. Thank God. Thank God. And that's the situation that we are in Nigeria. The elite of Nigeria, the political elite of Nigeria, you have alienated yourself from the people so much that if anything happens today going in Nigeria, Nigerians will say, thank God. They will say, thank God. Right now, many of our politicians believe, say, which they happen all around for Africa, the coup left, right, and center. You know, <laughs> this is not the first coup in Niger. I don't know why everybody they make noise, but this is not the first coup in Niger. The fact that this coup, the fact this is not the first coup in Niger in the last five years, but the fact that this coup is making noise like this, now you didn't say something is being planned. Now, what we don't know for Nigeria, we say there's a new industrial revolution at hand. There's a new industrial revolution at hand. The oil revolution, you know, when industrial revolution happened, now nah, 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 palm oil with the main uh, fueling mechanism, what did they use and coal? Palm oil, now nah, they use as grease, coal, now nah, they used to. Then another revolution came in, in within another revolution within a revolution. You understand? So all these things are happening within the industrial revolution. The oil revolution happened within industry switch from steel, from coal and steam energy and palm oil to oil, finding all the grease they need from oil, the energy they need. So the the oil revolution happened. Now when the first industrial revolution was going to happen from a manual digging ground agricultural when they start the first industrial revolution building the first factories and oibo no longer needed people to work for them in farms that's when they see they stop slavery only to come and enslave us in our own land. Colonialism, I'm telling you, is this enslavement in your own land. That was just what colonialism, the way they were treating us in the uh, islands, in the so-called plantations, was brought to our land directly. Because now, now, the raw materials for those industries were in our ground there. That's why it's a shame that African parents that grew up under colonialism that are still alive today, refuse to tell their children the truth about how they lived in their lives, the experiences that they had truly had, because many of them were either in service of the colonial government against their people, you understand, or they were so degraded, they are ashamed to talk about it as men, say, ah, this kind of thing happened to me, but we have to educate our children. If they no great teach them for school, we have to tell them with our mouth. So the need for raw materials brought about colonialism, the industrial revolution was equal to colonialism for African people. After they, set, after they secured that one, where everything happened, okay, we can't get independence. The way they say they ended slavery, they say they give you independence. Mm -hmm. Within this independence, the oil revolution happened. As the oil revolution happened, they gave us what they call military government. 
Because whether you like it or not, every military government in Africa was put in place by the Americans. And what was the plan? Of, what was the reason to separate us from the negotiations, for, to separate the people from the negotiation? I repeat, every military institution in Africa today was created by Europeans. The first military people, the fathers of the military, the Obasanjo, they are still alive. Yara, uh, Buhari is still alive. Obasanjo is still alive. These are not your great, 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 great. Mm -mm. They still day like this. These men that first served in their teen, they enter as 15, 16. Babangi them. They enter very young. Then go on. They were young. In their teenage years, we both groomed them. These were the people willing to kill other African people to help Europeans to secure loot from Africa. Do you, do you understand? I, I don't know how to explain it. These men were now systematically put in power for 40 years. The only reason they put them there was to make sure that you do not have a power to negotiate your labor in the new oil revolution that came. They sit down there, the bastard dies, everything. All of them become rich, billionaire, multi-millionaire, up and down the place. When they do the oil business finish, oil begin to crash for this world, okay, because a new industrial revolution is about to happen. This is a inf information technology green era, green age, uh, green, climate, whatever, whatever they call it, green energy, information technology. This is the new age where the things they now need from Africa is different again. A new round of negotiations must happen. And what are they bringing back to secure it? They are boys. And in the midst of this, as usual, go and look at the first coup that happened in Nigeria in 1966. It is the same way stupid elites like this were calling for military coup in the country or their people because they knew the deal they had with their masters. You know, and you people would think that some military boys will come and take over and they will come and kill so They will never kill anybody that you think that needs killing. Is that they kill those ones that are almost dead already? Or they just kill the ones that just join? The main players will run away, either run away or integrate. Integrate into the system as they will. The same people that refuse to give us job. This is why me, I don't like the way that we, we, we Nigerians, they always do things against ourselves. The way people are making noise, like the people who afford food last year, before they remove subsidy. How many? Nigeria has been constantly under 90% poverty rate since I have since. 65% on less than uh, $2 a day. 65% are living on less than $2. They're under uh, 25%. They say join those 65%. Uh, 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 then they for extreme poverty of less than $1 a day. Since I've been born, nobody can afford anything that the elite in Nigeria produce for their own people. Because they don't produce it for the people. The way they don't train doctors to want to heal the sick. So doctor thinks that to be a doctor is so that I can make money, not so that my nation can be healthy. So they send him out in the wild to go and just take money for people's health. If he doesn't get the money, mm -hmm, government doesn't care about his well-being he must go and take it from the people your police is not trained to secure the nation it's trained to make money for himself he's there to collect salary and if they don't give him his salaries they push him out there to come and take it from you so we have been to this place before anybody now let me now come to the point of the military coup any dumbass african that is calling for military coup is 100% stupid. Anybody that thinks any military coup is anything positive, anybody doing it. First of all, all these military boys, they, they do military coup, right? The first thing they do is to go and take over all the big, big mansion that the so-called bad people are living inside before. They don't stay in the 
barrack or move close to the poor people who they go and live in the same big big house start driving the same big big car that the same people that they say were evil were staying and using i mean are you not they, these are just <laughs> oh my goodness see the only thing that the military could have the any positive military action is that the military will come and tell the people that we we have gone on strike we are no longer in support of what these people are doing people go and demand political change all power is with the people not with the military the military should tell the people we are behind your struggle for political change go and meet go and meet these people because now then we they fear we know make most people they approach so tell the people the truth, that okay we are on strike oh, seek political change let the government politicians and the people know that they are facing themselves one to one no you can't siphon our back please 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 see they say now african democracy is somebody here said african democracy is colonization let the army take over <laughs> politicians are other times more corrupt i mean who was more corrupt than babangida abacha buhari not be military man Obasanjo not be military man. Who, who is more corrupt than these people? I mean, the kind of things we say, as if we are stupid. You know, the kind of dumb shit people say. And the evidence is right there before their eyes to see the truth. But because they've been paid, you know, they are agents. They don't understand. When uh, uh, President Tinubu came to give a speech, I was looking at all the um, so-called analysts, and experts all of them immediately jump up and down what a great speech until president tinubu announces price control in nigeria he doesn't care about what poor people are going through i'm sorry to say because it has never been about anything i repeat even before they remove subsidy how many people could afford dangote salt and all this bag of rice that nigerian farmers make Nigerians cannot afford it. They, without that price control, what, what the president announced was a largesse to the so-called upcoming middle class, the, the agents, their usual agents. When you hear they want to give uh, 50 million to 75 farming enterprises, which people own those farms? Which people advertise farm on their Instagram? You see them, all these government aid, all these, their personal assistants, they don't go invest for farm for washroom, all this. Exactly. What are they growing in the place? First of all, in Nigeria, 70% of our arable land is still used to grow cash crops for export. Cash crops for export, our land is still used exclusively for business. The land in Nigeria, the arable land, is still used exclusively for business, for growing palm tree, so that they can extract palm oil. So they can extract palm oil. Nobody cares about what people are eating in Nigeria. So the new liberal policies that the president is being encouraged to follow. He must be reminded that these are the policies that are alienating even the Americans. As educated as the Americans are, it is alienating them from their own government to the extent that Donald Trump could call for a coup, basically, in America, and people storm their own capital. That is the level of alienation that the neoliberal liberal policies have cost in america so you should imagine it in africa in nigeria where our educational standard is not even a tenth of what those ones have how alienated the people are what can the people actually afford in nigeria what can we truly afford as the people already people waiting for my own group they are already saying oh more if they flex for this uh, kind of economy is a big thing, is a big is a blessing. If you can flex in this economy, it's a blessing. I'm telling you, people are already showing off by flexing in this economy. That is the response that my own class and group and generation, this is the response that they have to the crisis on ground. 
the most the, the military man that I respect the most in Africa is Thomas Sankara. And Thomas Sankara's only failure is that he was a military man. Because at the end of the day, who shot him in the back of the head? His best friend, another military man. So even if any of these cool plotters are telling you that they are doing good and they are actually good today, how are you sure that none of them did? Because all the military boys in Africa that grow up to become officers are trained by our imperial colonial masters, by our number one enemies. They are all going to Sandhurst or they are going to West Point or they are going to France School of Military. It is Europeans that train them, that put the ideology in their head. If any military man truly feels he's fed up with the way the country is run, why pull your uniform and drop your gun? Come and join the people. Politically seek power. Tell the people why, what you have seen in there. Because me, I live through military regime in Nigeria. I mean, what the hell? I'm not that stupid. The only thing that the military will do in Africa is to separate us from our right to negotiate. Separate us from our right to associate. Finish! Nigeria was under military rule from 1966, basically, non-stop, up until 1999. Finish. What are we going to say about what? What? What is the? What is the? Uh, what is the grand idea that came out from that 33 years rule? What, what was the good thing that came from that? So this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity for the, work, for the politicians in Nigeria to reconcile with the people. Stop protecting few Nigerians at the expense of the future, not even of the people, of the future of the country, of the peace. Now, they are talking about war. President, oh my God. We are talking about war. We say we cannot afford subsidy. How can we afford war with Niger? How can we afford war with Niger? Somebody here said, what about Gaddafi? Oh, this is a great point. What about Gaddafi? <laughs> Many people are fans of Gaddafi. I am not a fan of Gaddafi. You understand? I do not support the American method of killing Gaddafi. I believe he was murdered unjustly and we are, as Africans are the ones paying the price and they did it intentionally. But Gaddafi, you know, he believed in Arab uh, imperialism. Of, that's why he created the AU, you know, for the for him to create a arab dominated africa you know whatever gaddafi i mean look at these people in libya how they treat black people now come on gaddafi was the sole protector <laughs> listen let's not go into gaddafi gaddafi you know at the end he learned his he learned he learned let's just say he learned but i'm not the one that you come and meet to praise gaddafi gaddafi said too many crazy things about us as african people you know, due to his Arabic uh, background, for me to want to praise or say anything about him, you know. But now, ECOWAS and our president, who is the head of ECOWAS, they're talking about war in Niger. Why are we going to fight to restore European interests? Because I didn't hear Niger say that they have any issue with Nigeria. If the Nigerian military feel that they want to betray their democracy. I feel that is a Nigerian business. We cannot even afford subsidy. How can we afford troops to send to Niger to protect what? What is? What are we going to protect? 
if we're going to expend any energy as fellow Africans, fellow West Africans, it is a reconciliatory to find a way to reconcile the military with their people. To find a way to diplomatically, diplomatically, the only effort we should be able to afford there is diplomatic. We already have an ambassador to Niger. You should go and talk to them. And whatever he can agree with them is what he can agree with them. Ah, the Parawa now. If we are saying that uh, our petrol, the subsidy of our petrol is furnishing the uh, African states around us. Niger was mentioned. Kutonu was mentioned. Uh, Benin was mentioned. Cameroon was mentioned. If we are saying that is unacceptable, how come going to lay Nigerian lives to spill Nigerian blood in Niger? How is that acceptable? How is that acceptable? If there's no money for subsidy, there's no money for war. If there's no money for subsidy, there's no money for war. What we do not understand also is that, historically speaking, America wants a grip in all these Francophone countries. After the end of Second World War, Britain was so broke that America could buy, basically buy all its colonies. That's why our Nigerian British system of prime minister and everything was converted to presidential system under Basanjo during the Marshall Plan. America paid for all that, sponsoring a lot of our universities, you know, through the Center for Cultural Freedom. This is the CIA front, through ITT, which was headed by Abiola. But that CIA front, a lot of money was pumped into Nigeria under the guise of development aid. But we signed the agreement to turn our system over to the United States, as many of British, Britain's former colonies had to do, because Britain had no way to sustain its colonies. But the French, through Charles de Gaulle, had a wicked, diabolical idea, because they knew that the African countries that were becoming newly independent, did not have enough expertise to run the bureaucracy that they left behind, to run the schools that they left behind, the hospitals. So France said, fine, you are independent, but you have to pay us for any of our professionals that you are using. And you have to pay us for the monetary system because we are the ones printing it. So in that way, France was able to control their colonies, even though they say they are independent, they held control. But today France is weak. America is doing what is doing to France, to what it did to England in in the two thousand in nineteen sixties to France now in two thousands. Trust me, that's what is going on. I've not done the research, but I'm sure if you go and check the background of any of these boys that are doing cool in this, you will see that they are all linked. They are all friends with America. I can bet something five five hundred dollar. If you go and investigate all of them's background, is it that they have been trained in one American place or they are currently partners with America in something? All of them that are doing all this coup all over West Africa. So now let me use, let me re advise our own politicians. Don't think that there's one special bond that you have with the uh, colonialists, with the imperialists of this world that will not let them betray you for their own personal interests. And their personal interest has always been the destabilization of our region, the destabilization of our nation so that you will no longer have the direct ability to negotiate anything with them. They are tired of paying bribe to 1,000 people. They want to go back to pay bribe to one strong man who will give order and boys will enter streets. That's what they want. They are butcher type. They want to send us back to those days, the strong man type of ruling, to the Babangida days, to the Diagwan Yara Bawari days, to the Obasanjo days. When one when, woman when don't hold meeting with them, they don't agree with them, everything is everything, go we'll talk to the main guys. They know they pass 12. They go form provisional ruling council. Now, now, now. And you all as 
the leaders of our nation know how infiltrated our military is. You know they are all full of CIA boys, left, right, and center. I don't have to tell you this. And for the Nigerians that think that whatever that these military boys will bring you any kind of justice, you must be crazy. Nigeria right now, with the politicians and military, supposedly on the same side, we know if you bring Desiani back from America. All these people when they pray, make military go up on a hole. They go wrong. And nobody will chase them. So I for one don't believe in any kind of military takeover of power in Africa. Because uh, I've seen all too well, there's no single, no military has done anything positive for any African person in this Africa. No military government. It will be well, it will do us all well to please go back. All the so called experts running the man, ping, 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 ping. I've seen them now on the news, they don't share 70 billion for all of them now. Everybody mouth down soon, silence. All the farm investors, everybody will be farmer. Because I don't see at least seventy percent of everybody with seventy percent of the lucky dwellers have farms somewhere. <laughs> invest in this farm, invest in my snail farm, invest in my this farm. They don't share on a seventy billion now. They don't, they don't begin to jump up and down. And the, anyway, everybody has been asking me for my own thoughts on the year cool. What did he do for Africa? Left at our center. And also, nobody claimed to be Pan-Africanist more than uh, Mobutu Sisiseko. <laughs> so when I hear all these <clears throat> cool plotters talking all the Pan-Africanist rhetoric, I just see Mobutu Sisiseko in their, in their face. All I see is Mobutu Sisiseko. Pan-Africanist this, pan If to say they really mean not to take, they will stay for their barracks. They will not pursue president from the house. Stay in your barracks. Do your live your normal life. Show the people that you are part still not lie. Not lie. As soon as they take power like this, they are moving straight to Asorok, driving bulletproof car. The same thing. Who would they complain? Say they waste all the money. They will be living the life. They'll be living the life. The judiciary, the legislator, leg legislative, the executive of the nation is completely alienated from the people of the nation. You're alienated, trust me. Uh, business elites, you are alienated. Trust me.
Yes, Thomas Sankara. I've said with somebody say what about Thomas Sankara? But I have said Thomas Sankara. What happened to him? Not be the same military shooter for head. The only mistake, as I said before, the only mistake Thomas Sankara made is that he was in the military. You can't do anything good from there in Africa. I've not seen it. I've not seen the African man that is that does do something good from inside the African military. You show me the African one. Show me one. They, uh, uh, but these same people that why they when they when they be recruits, uh, they be uh, uh, lieutenant. They don't do. They don't. Do, a rebel against their ogao, they don't face she or their general, they don't beat all the general with the teeth their money. Nigerians, look at the open, look at the left with the bamboo now. Okay, all these boys that they did military, they don't vow gather themselves when they first beat all their general with the teeth for their money, enter chief of defense staff office, beat her, beat all these year old old men with the spoil, where they say they spoil. they don't do they don't go military uh, ministry of uh, defense beat beat all those ones mm -mm. straight <laughs> come on man come on man come on man i don't understand what, what, what are they gonna do what are they gonna do Then you ever fight fight among the Oga? No, 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 no. That's not the problem. All they are chief of defense staff, chief of this one staff. With the they, 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 mm, 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 mm. all those ones will come line up for their back. All those ones will be Baba Sally. They'll come line up for their back. Put all those ones for front. Say we are, we are the new revolutionary government. We are taking take, take, take power of the head of the All the money with chief of defense staff, say the chief unko. All the money with chief of naval staff, chief of the army staff, uh, air marshal, all those ones, IG, all the money they hammer. None of the first best for that one. None of the first do anything. I never see anything for that one. They're not going to look on my institution. First go remove bad things with inside the institution. Well, I'm going to every country wake up saying, hey, how many people don't shit your guy? Banker, what do you do wait for you to be shit your guy? You saw anything to wait for you to be. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Oh, I beg, 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 You join military, you don't have to say you no one get the involved in running political office. That's all it means. You don't sign your Zobi contract. Chill them. No. You know, do them. They do join that one. Come say now from there. They won't come. Where would it be that? Where would it be that? Which kind of sense be that? Oh, I beg. I'm done with it.